Hello, my name is Hilton Gibson and I'm going to demonstrate installation of DSpace on top of an Ubuntu server operating system. Just to get some first things out of the way and just some details. Um, if you want to find out who I am and more details, please go to that website. If you want to view my CV, please go to that website. If you want to contact me by email, please use that email address. Okay, I will just put this up here in the middle here for you to see and leave it there for a while. So those are my contact details and my email details in my CV. And that is how you get hold of me. Okay. This is how I look. This is what I look like. Um, picture taken end of last year, I think. I'm about 57 years old, originally from Zimbabwe, and now living and working in, at Stellenbosch University and living in Stellenbosch. Okay, what's required? I uh, installed the Oracle VirtualBox software onto my Ubuntu desktop. As you see, this is an Ubuntu desktop. And I'm going to be using the VirtualBox and this Ubuntu software to demonstrate uh, the installation of DSpace. To start with, I just want to bring your attention to the wiki. So let's just start Firefox up for you. And let's just put some put the toolbar away and bookmarks. Okay. So I would like most of the what I'm going to demonstrate has been documented on this wiki. There's the wiki address. Uh, when you go to that wiki, you click on this link here at the bottom right hand corner. Um, then you come to the practical guidelines for starting an institutional repository. And if you scroll down, you can get to the installation instructions. And we're going to go through the installation instructions. So we click on here. There will be three videos. The first video will highlight procedure number one, which is the installation of the Ubuntu server. The second procedure, the second video uh, will highlight procedure number two, which is the preparation of the Ubuntu server for the installation of the DSpace software. And finally, procedure three will go through the actual installation of the DSpace software. I just want to mention that um, the installation instructions will apply best Unix system administration practice and therefore they differ from the official DSpace instructions. Um, I'm also trying to make use of the wiki to promote the use of a reference architecture for the installation of DSpace which should make uh, much simpler installations, much simpler configuration, much simpler customization letter, and much simpler upgrades. Um, I have here a table of the recommended softwares and architecture for the versions of DSpace. Uh, I'll be doing installation of DSpace 5.5 using the Ubuntu 14.04 server operating system, uh, using the XML interface with Mirage 2, using the Postgres SQL database, an open JDK 7 uh, run Java runtime, Maven 305, Ant 1.93, and Java Tomcat version 7. Okay, to begin. I suggest that um, you follow this procedure and that you set up a test server uh, and practice your uh, installation skills as I've highlighted there. This, uh, as I mentioned here, this procedure has been specifically designed for production installation of DSpace. Okay, what are the requirements? Well, 
hopefully you download the server guide and have a look at that uh, the server guide is based on Ubuntu 14.04 the LTS version LTS being a long term supported version you will need some hardware at the moment this is the kind of hardware we're using and I've supplied the quotes uh, I'll be doing the installation on a virtual box then I'll try to um, simulate installation on a piece of uh, real metal hardware um, if you do buy a server please make sure um, that you set up the RAID array on the server before doing any installation at this at, at Stellenbosch we use RAID 6 on our servers that allows us two disk failures and, and the machine will still continue and it allows you to swap out the failures uh, while the machine is running and the um, file system will be stored dynamically also it's a good idea um, before purchasing hardware to estimate your uh, disk usage that you will have and I have some help there also if you have run out of disk space uh, I've had some procedures there to add a new disk the software we're going to use as the server operating system is the LTS version of Ubuntu as I said before if you want to find out why we use Ubuntu you can click here and finally um, download you can download the Ubuntu versions here and at the moment we're on Ubuntu 14.04 12.04 is there just for convenience and for those who have already used this procedure so we're going to base our installation of the server on Ubuntu 14.04 and as you see there I have the CD downloaded and ready to go okay why did we select Ubuntu well we have decided that um, open access should be based on open technology to ensure the, the best possible chance of uh, the content reaching future researchers and um, Ubuntu is based on Debian which is the um, kind of the mothership of the uh, distributions and the LTS allows us to have um, um, predictable upgrade processes um, and Ubuntu is, is much simpler to upgrade than um, Red Hat enterprise systems or any other systems you might think we selected it for patriotic reasons because we're South African that is one of the reasons but mostly it's based on Debian uh, it has a predictable release schedule it's open source and based on open technologies and open standards that's the real reasons okay so we uh, we have done the drive so the next step right before we begin an installation at all we must decide what we want to call our system on the internet and that's normally called the hostname or URL if you're not f familiar with what a hostname or URL is there's some um, links there to help you out but basically it's the name you give the machine on the internet and before you give it any name I just would like to give you a few tips to try and avoid using these names um, because DSpace may not be the vehicle for your repository archive in the future. Uh, IR and repository are concepts and may confuse the user and it may change in the future. So that's why I mentioned here that the software and the IR concept are only the vehicles for the repository and should not define its URL. If that's the case, then what name to use? Well, for a purely research outputs repository, um, we used scholar.sun um, sun.ac.za is our institutional domain so we just added scholar to it and we call it sun scholar for our digital collections we have decided to um, standardize on a, a host name or internet name naming procedure where lib.sun is going to be used for everything that will be publicly facing so we call our digital collections digital.lib for that reason anything in internal we call it bib.sun something bib.sun 
for uh, for example uh, for some digitized heritage items you may want to call it heritage dot my domain for a gen general archive you may want to call it archive or archives my domain so before naming a repository you, you should be fairly certain of what you want to call it and what its function is Another thing to keep in mind when naming a repository is to keep the name short and easy to remember and not to change it. If you change the name later on, all the links that are people have used to your repository will be broken. And that will affect the impact of your research radically. So please, uh, when, trying, when um, deciding on the name, keep it short, easy to remember, keep it persistent, Keep the name in line with the function of the repository and never ever change it. Try to avoid changing it as far as you can, as far as possible. Then um, before finishing off, have a look at the web analytics page to see how important the host name is to web analytics. Then also uh, discuss the host name selection with your campus network administrator, very important uh, is to get them on board and um, do not even begin or to start the installation in, in, unless you are completely certain of what you want to call the, your repository on the internet and as I said earlier on here are some uh, links to follow to find out um, more about the host name or domain name or internet name um, that you're going to call this um, server or repository. Alright, the next step is actually to do the Ubuntu server installation and I have some help guides here. The installation will be done uh, using a console. There is no graphical user interface for the installation. Um, so to get around to the console, I have some instructions. You use the tab key and arrow key to move between items use the space key to select items and use the enter key to activate controls or buttons and as I do the installation I'll be referring to these most important parts of the Ubuntu server installation um, to help you get an Ubuntu server going alright then after that we'll go through the uh, after the Ubuntu installation we'll go through the um, procedures after the installation. So to start with I'm going to put the browser to one side of the screen like this with Ubuntu and then um, I'm going to start the Oracle VirtualBox there and put the screen, put the browser back there and try and fit it nicely, there we go. As you can see I am using the um, Oracle VirtualBox and I already have some systems installed Windows 7 and Windows XP for those systems that or that software that must run in Windows and can't run on, uh, on an open source system you know, so, so I just to, uh, to, if you want to follow me uh, along with this procedure in this video is to install VirtualBox um, just type VirtualBox in Google and search for it and then install they are in, the software can be installed on uh, Windows systems Apple systems and uh, open source systems like Ubuntu and as you see here okay to start a new machine new virtual machine we click on new which we'll do now and we're going to call this one dspace we're going to um, base it on Linux and Ubuntu 64-bit uh, I suggest using 64-bit systems for your server operating systems. 32-bit systems are being phased out slowly but surely. Um, depending on the amount of RAM available to you on your local machine, set up the RAM. But we would like at least one gigabyte of RAM for our virtual machine. Next, we create a virtual hard disk. Uh, the recommended size is 8 gigabytes. We're going to create one of 20 gigabytes, so we continue. 
we use the VDI uh, format, virtual disk image format there. You can use any of the other formats, but just to, you can stick with that one. We'll make it dynamically allocated. And then we just type in here 2.0 for 20 gigabytes, and then we click on create. So there it is. We have an a virtual machine uh, ready to install uh, the uh, Ubuntu operating system. The next step is to attach the Ubuntu server CD to the virtual machine. So we go back to settings, we select this one, then we go back to settings, and then we look at storage, and we notice that the IDE controller, or the one for uh, CDs, is empty. So we tell it here, if we click here, that we want to choose a virtual optical disk to attach to it. And I've downloaded the Ubuntu server CD to the desktop where that is. And so you find where you've downloaded yours, select that, then click on open. And now you see we have the CD attached to the virtual machine. And it's basically ready to install. So we click OK. And if you see the storage now, there we go. We have the CD attached. So this machine theoretically is now ready to do the Ubuntu server installation. So let's begin the Ubuntu server installation. We assume we have already settled on the host name. So we're ready to go. So we click on start. As you see, there we go through the BIOS and eventually the virtual BIOS and eventually we get to the first screen. And we select English for the installation. Uh, there are some further options here for um, other things to do with Ubuntu server, but we're going to stick with the install Ubuntu server. So we select that by hitting enter, just select enter. And now the second screen should come up. There might be some strange messages there but not to worry this works let's continue wait for that to finish okay it looks like it okay now we have the language screen and before we continue I'm just going to put the, this out of the way so it's not to confuse anybody and then slide it nicely there next door as far as possible okay so we select English for our language uh, because in South Africa we use English and this will be the English server operating system so it's English and we select South Africa as our location we're not going to configure the keyboard but if you're in a because we are using English and most keyboards are US English but if you, uh, if you have a, a special keyboard and this is where you do the selection you select yes we're going to say no we're going to stay with the defaults so we're going to say yes we have an English South Africa keyboard and select that. Alright now it's um, detecting hardware what is required reading the CD-ROM. I just want to mention where the steps are where nothing happens and no interaction is required I might pause the, um, the uh, recording so as to save time every now and again but here it looks like we can keep the recording going to demonstrate what's happening yeah, I'm just going to pause it now oh, okay we looks like we didn't have to pause right there now it's installing um, it's loading uh, drivers that it might require and to interact with the server hardware it's loading RAID, array drivers disk formatting drivers whatever is required for it to um, talk to the server hardware yeah it's detecting the network hardware And then we'll go through the network setup later on, but um, for this virtual box, it's um, 
it'll be using DHCP and, and using that setup. Um, for this system, we're just going to stay with Ubuntu as its host name. And to do that, we just press enter. Right. Just on the host name, remember there it was before. There's the same screen. I just want you to remember that in step two, where we discussed the host name considerations, just want you to remind you about that. Uh, so, but for the network setup, uh, we'll be doing that later on. But you need to have a host name prepared before even doing the network setup. So the next part is setting up the DSpace user, and we have that on the screen running here. And this unfortunately is not really um, configurable. It's critical that we apply the DSpace username for the home folder. And the home folder and the creation of the DSpace user is critical to the rest of the installation process, as I will um, highlight later on when we do disk partitioning and the further installation. So this must be followed precisely to work later on. So we're going to call the full name for the new user. We're going to call this new user the DSpace user. DSpace user. And press tab to continue. Username is DSpace, that's correct. Press tab to continue. Password we're going to, for this system, we're going to use 09 Ubuntu 09. And we'll confirm the password with 09 Ubuntu 09. Press tab to continue. We won't be encrypting the home directory. This is the server. Um, you may if you want to, but uh, to make the system more stable and not to involve too many technologies, uh, we've done. We have not encrypted our home folder. So you select no by pressing enter. Okay, so now it continues to gather other stuff that it needs. So just to recap, this must be done in order for the following installation to be successful, all the procedures later on. So there are the screenshots of how to create this DSpace user. This is a very critical step. Okay, now we continue on the installation here. It wants the time zone. So we have the right time zone, Africa Johannesburg. If it's not correct, please um, select another option and try to correct it. So we've got it correct. So we press enter to select yes. And now uh, it continues. Electing hardware. And we're waiting for the part where it comes to the partitioning or slicing up the disk for use. Okay, so this is the partition part. And I'll just go back to the wiki page to reference it just to show you. I did this screenshot on another um, virtual box installation uh, about a year ago, but you can see it's the same, we're at the same step in installation. And I want you to take very careful note of uh, partition size and how to slice up the disk, what sizes to give the partitions and how many partitions we create. So before we do that, let's recap that. In step one, I use separate partitions for the home and valve folders to help later on with disaster recovery and system stability. I use the home partition for the DSpace system and data files because you never create a top level folder for installation of software on a Linux Unix system. So we're going to install in the home partition. So we're going to create in the home folder, sorry, and we're going to create a home partition to store that. And I just want to highlight here, as I said before, one never installs operational software in a top level folder on a Unix Linux server. Never ever. Okay, then I've created a table of the installation. The forward slash means the root partition or the system partition where the system software will be installed. And that should be about 
10 gigabytes, 20 gigabytes on a production server would be great. The swap partition, two times the installed RAM. The VAR partition is where all the log files and the database files are, will be installed. And there, a minimum of 10 gigs and 50 gigs preferred on a production server. But again, this depends on how big your database index files and how large the log files get. Then the rest of the partition of the disk then is will be uh, you create a home partition with the rest of the disk space used, and that'll take up the rest of the total disk. And the, the home partition again, as I said, will be where the disk space software files and bit streams are stored. And this is our production server setup um, before we upgraded. So you can see there we have the uh, system partition or the root partition, 20 gigabytes. There we have the VAR partition, which I used 20 gigabytes for. And then the rest was used on the home partition, which had um, 481 gigabytes. Right, and then I repeat again here is that we, we have a one. The first partition is the uh, root system partition. The second one will be the swap partition. The third one will be the VAR partition. And the fourth one, the home partition, will use the rest of the disk space. Uh, and then I have some videos and um, links to read about uh, partition sizing. So I'm going to continue um, with this one. And to continue, we select manual. So we go back here and we select manual for our partition. And here, to continue, we select the disk, which is a 22 gigabyte virtual disk. And we press enter to select it. And then we select, uh, use the arrow key and select yes and say create a new empty partition. We say yes, and there it's creating a new empty partition. Now, we actually create the, the, uh, the now we slice the disk. So we select free space here, and the first one we say we're going to create a new partition, and we're going to create a system partition. We have 20 gigabytes, so two, 10 percent for the system partition sounds good. So we say two gigabytes for the system partition for this virtual disk, and we make it primary and at the beginning, and we leave the defaults here alone. We're going to use the journal filing system; it'll be mounted under root and so on and so forth. And then we say here. Yeah, done selecting partition and we press enter now we go back down go press the down down arrow to select the rest of the free space we press enter we're going to create a new partition again and here we're going to create a swap file and let's say we have 500 um, gigabytes of ram so we need 500 megabytes of ram so we're going to create a one gigabyte partition which is two times 500 gigabytes and we click continue we're going to make it a primary partition very important and we're going to go from the beginning of the partition. Yeah, we must just change the part where it says use as. We're going to hit enter and we say we're going to use it as swap area. And we're done. Nothing else to do. We say done setting up the partition for the second partition. Now we come to the third partition again. We just select free space. We want to create the VAR partition. We say create a new partition. Again, the VAR partition, we're going to just Standardize on 10% of disk space, which is 2 gigabytes, and then we click continue, make it primary, make it the beginning. And here we change the mount point because we want to use it as the partition 3 for the var folder. So we go and we select the variable data to mount it under var, forward slash var. We select that there, variable data. The rest stays the same. We're going to use the journaling file system and then we say done setting up partition. Now we can use the rest of the free space for the home folder. So we say create new partition and we don't size it, we use everything else that's left. And we say it's a primary partition and we leave the defaults there. It's mounted under home as we want and then we finish off with saying done setting up partition. And there we go. As you can see, uh, if we just review it, we have a root partition, we have a swap partition, we have a var partition, and we have a home partition. Ready for production version of vSpace. So to finish, we go like this, finish partitioning, and write changes to disk. And we there's a review, and if you're happy with the review, you press the tab key, 
on the arrow key and then press enter to say yes might change this to the disk and there it goes it creates the file systems and formats the file systems and now it begins the installation because it has a it has a target for the installation so while it does that I'm going to pause until it gets to the next important part of the server installation okay I'm back the next part of the installation it is asking about is the proxy server we're not going to be using a proxy server so we just press the tab key and select continue and press enter right now it's retrieving softwares and again I'm just going to pause until it's finished with that now the installation is asking about um, applying automatic security updates I suggest on a server is to select that um, on a production server but for the purposes of testing it's not really required so we'll just continue with no automatic updates and now um, we come to the part the important part about selecting what software to install on the server so I'm going to click here on the wiki page here I clicked this part as you can see it's almost the same screen um, and here we're going to select the open SSH server the PostgreSQL database and the Tomcat Java web server so to select the items we go back here we press the space bar to select the open SSH server spacebar to select the PostgreSQL database and then spacebar to select the Tomcat Java server only those three components please don't install anything else it will, inter it will greatly affect the, um, the procedures later on just those three components and they are essential for the installation to continue we press the tab key to the continue button continue option and then we press enter and as you can see now it's installing the software off the CD which is great um, makes uh, the server installation very simple uh, and standardized with the Windows Server you'll be downloading a lot of software uh, to get your server into the proper state ready to uh, install DSpace but with the Ubuntu and open source it's, it's a lot simpler it just requires you to learn a few skills and to go through this procedure um, as carefully as you can and learning as much as you can okay and while that continues uh, I'm going to pause while it continues installing the software there I'm going to pause okay I'm back it went through the installation and installed the required softwares uh, and now it wants to know uh, if it can install Grub Grub being the bootloader uh, very essential there is nothing strange to do here we just select yes to install it uh, grub into the master boot record of the disk and we press enter and there it uh, starts and installs the grub into the first partition of the main disk of the first disk as I said earlier on this disk uh, should be a big RAID 6 array on your um, bare metal server now it's completing um, installation process there yeah, the installation now is complete so now if we go back to the wiki we just want to review what happened here we installed the uh, we installed the Ubuntu server we um, gave it a host name we set up the DSpace user we partitioned the disk and we installed the softwares that are required for the DSpace installation so if we go back to the machine we just click continue enter to continue and we do some more housekeeping there and we wait for it to finish the housekeeping and it should um, then reboot there we go it's rebooting the virtual box machine is rebooting as you can see and there's the grub boot loader screen and there it's loading the kernel the Linux kernel and once the Linux kernel is loaded and it's mounted the file systems uh, it should start <coughs> there we go starting services as you can see there it's starting all the services required and we should get to the part now where um, we should be able to log into our server now 
Just remember I'm using a VirtualBox machine. Uh, this could be a real machine in your data center or in your um, central IT server room. So just imagine you're standing there in the central IT server room in front of your new server and you just installed the server software and now you're going to log in. So as before we use the DSpace user. So we log in as the DSpace user, type DSpace, press enter. The password that we set up before 09 Ubuntu 09 and there we are we logged in there now now what do we do now after the server installation well we need if we go back to the wiki we're going to have a look what we need to do after the server installation we have to do network registration what does that mean that means we're going to assign an IP address to the host name of the machine this again depends on your institution and your network administrator at your institution so please consult your network administrator before continuing with this but the way to set this up on a machine is to use what we call static uh, assignment um, they use a static assignment there um, and we always use static assignment of IP addresses on all our servers and this is what a static assignment looks like eventually on the Ubuntu server uh, it's a static assignment is done in this file in this location the interface is file in the location EDC network and the assignment eventually looks like this when you have all the parameters correct so that does the assignment there okay um, so when you're at the server, you type that command there and it will open up that network interfaces file and you put all these details in just like this. You put your own address mask and all these details according to your network administrator. Okay. And then once you've done that, you set up the software repositories. But for the purposes of this virtual box, we're just going to um, quickly set up a network that works inside the virtual box. Now I've copied this procedure from this location there, that reference, and this is necessary if you're using VirtualBox. So um, the first thing to do then is to power down the VM. Here I'm just going to close it, click there, and say power off the machine, and I click OK. There, the machine is gone. Then we go to the VirtualBox software itself. We go back here, and we click on Settings, uh, and select network adapter one and make it a bridged adapter so we go we select the virtual machine we go to settings and we go to network and we click adapter one and we make it a bridged adapter then we click on adapter two and we enable the network adapter and we make it a host only adapter and then we select the host on the VboxNet uh, adapter. If you have errors selecting host only adapter, then go to File Preferences Network. So we go back here. We go to File. We select the var sorry. We select the Oracle Virtual Box here, and we go to File preferences and here under network we click here to create a NAT network and then under host only we click here and it will create the VBOX 0 and then you click OK then I suggest to restart VirtualBox and you come back to the DSpace and then select host only again and select that VBOX so just to go through again we selected file preferences and we created the network uh, interfaces and then we set up the settings again and we go and use those network interfaces and they adapt to VBOX0 and uh, there. Now we start up the virtual box. We start it up again and there we go. Starting up and just put that to the side again. And there our server starting up now.
and we just wait for it to start up. And then we log in again, and this is the DSpace user. It's the password 09 and link to 09. And now we want to see what the interfaces look like. So we type this command in here ifconfig press space dash a. And now we see we have an ether 0 with that address, and we have an ether 1 with no address. So we want to set up ether 1. <laughs> To have an address so we type this command that command yeah so we type it if you do nano for slash etc network for slash interfaces and we use the because we're using su do which means uh, complete this command as the administrator so we must put in the administrator or password which in this case is 09 Ubuntu 09 when you create the first user on an Ubuntu server that user becomes the administrative user or what we call the SU do user anyway now we continue down this file and we want to create uh, we want to add these lines here similar lines like that for ether1 so we go down here we type auto ether1 and it's an interface it's an uh, ether1 interface uh, it's an internet interface, inet interface and we're going to use DHCP to assign an IP address to it and then using VirtualBox we must now type F2 to save it type F2 and type a capital Y to say yes and then we press enter to save it. Remember that when you're in VirtualBox to save anything using Nano, press F2. That's just the one exception. And then we can restart the networking or we can restart the server. So it's safer here to restart the server. So we type as you do reboot to restart the server and we press enter and we wait for the server to restart and then we will check the, the networking again and to see if it's okay so we wait for the server again to start up remember when doing the networking and assigning the IP address you must involve your campus network administrator with this procedure it's very important okay there's the server starting up again Okay, we log in as the DSpace user and we use the password for the DSpace user who is also the SUDo administrator user and then we type that command ifconfig-a and we should see IP addresses for both interfaces and there we go, there's an IP address for Ether0 and now an IP address for Ether1 so on our local machine using VirtualBox we should be able now to ping this virtual machine so let's do that let's open a terminal um, for convenience I put the terminal on what we call a dash launcher in Ubuntu you simply type control alt and T to open a terminal um, and that'll be uh, explained earlier later on but here we're going to ping um, the local machine with the local IP address of 192.168.2.9 and there we get a reply which is great which means now from our local machine using the local terminal we can connect to the virtual machine so we don't have to run the virtual box virtual machine like this here um, we don't have to be logged in sorry we keep it running but we don't have to be logged in um, so we exit from here from the virtual box machine and we log out is typing exit so when I minimize this this is the same as logging out the local server in the central server room 
and going back to your office and that is what uh, that's virtually done by minimizing that so we're putting that away and now we come back to our office and now we are going to use a terminal in our office with our Ubuntu desktop or our Windows desktop to connect to the server in the server room okay that is what we are simulating with this uh, virtual box networking so from now on I'm going to be uh, doing the setup as if we were um, logged in remotely to the uh, server so we continue here and we log in remotely and we're going to continue with this, with the um, with the um, network setup so to, to log in to remotely to the server we have to, we would log into it its equivalent host name but we're using virtualbox we don't have a registered host name so we're going to log into it using its IP address and we type SSH and the username at what IP address we're going to use 192.168.2.9 to log into it remotely so there we go it says do you want to accept the fingerprinting we say yes we do and now we need the password now we have the same password 09 Ubuntu 09 and we logged in. Now if we type I've config, we could, should see the same networking parameters. Yep, there we go. Uh, Ether0, so we've logged into the Ether0 interface and now there's an Ether1 interface that should be uh, web facing. And we can test that. Let's ping, um, let's see if we're on the web. Uh, remember my private machine has uh, an internet connection via a local service provider called Telcom, an ADSL connection. Um, so I suggest um, also before you start this procedure on a private machine or a um, work machine is to make sure that your workstation uh, has a connection to the internet and that you've opened up the proxy settings or whatever is required at your campus to open up an internet connection. So here we are assuming the server is connected to the internet in the server room uh, by the campus network administrator. So now We've logged into that server and we just want to test if the campus network administrator has given us access to the internet. So we ping a website that we know is always available, which is google.com, and see if we get a, okay, sorry, a wrong spelling. And we want to go to google.com and we press enter, and there we get a reply from google.com, which means this server now has access to the internet and uh, is ready for the next procedures okay like I said please review this network interfacing um, right after the, the network interface setup we want to set up the software repositories this is very important because we want to keep our software up to date with security and settings and so forth so before we begin uh, preparing the server we must set up the re software repositories so we um, log into the server which we have done remotely um, to log into the server if you're using a Ubuntu desktop you press Control alt t which opens a terminal and then you log in to the server um, using that nomenclature instead of hostname we use that IP address as you saw earlier on then the next step is to back up the file that has the listing of the sources so we copy that um, to select that you press the left button of your mouse and then drag across there until that all of that orange area is selected and then again you release the left button and right click and you select copy and now very conveniently you go back to the terminal when you're logged into the server and you right click anywhere and you say paste and then you hit enter to execute the command and it will require you to enter the password to execute the command and we type the password 09 Ubuntu 09 and there you go so if you can cut, copy and paste, you can install DSpace onto an Ubuntu server. And then we do the next step again, same thing, copy and paste, type it in here, paste it in here, execute now. Now we're using the nano editor. And the nano editor, I have some help here for you. Uh, I suggest review the help or print it or something, copy and paste it for the nano editor. But with the nano editor to delete a line you type control k so we can delete everything there and by continually holding the k button down and everything gets deleted so i pressed control and k and everything got deleted and i held it down
So now it's all deleted. Now we're using, we want to use the official or a stable source for our software. And our campus is one of the official mirrors. So I'm going to copy that and paste this in here. And there you see. All we do is paste it in there. And then again, now we're not using VirtualBox. So now we can use the commands inside here to save a file with, virtual for with Nano. You type Control O and you press Enter. And that has now written that file out. Then to get out of Nano, you type Control and X and you're out of Nano. Okay. Again, to save what you've changed is Control O and then exit is Control X. Okay. To delete a line is Control K. To continue deleting lines, you just type Control K all the time or hold Control K down at the same time. Okay. So now <coughs> we want to make our soft make sure our software is up to date. So we type select this as a good as system administrator. You should always make sure your software is up to date. So it has the latest security patches. So we update and type that, copy and paste. And now it's going out on the internet and downloading the uh, the latest software uh, from the official mirror on our campus. And we just wait for that for that, um, those files to download from the server. This all depends on the speed of the internet. Okay, there's downloaded the software. Now we need to type this command here to do to actually do the upgrade. So we copy and paste again. Paste that in there. So these are packages that have been updated since the release of that uh, CD, the point four CD. And as a, again, as I said, as a good system administrator, you must update the software. So this will take a while, and while it's happening, I'll, I'll pause the pause the recording um, to continue with the upgrade of the software we just type yes a capital Y and press enter and there it goes downloading the software. so while this is happening I'm going to pause and I'll be back to you when this is finished okay I'm back the uh, software has been updated so the next step to make sure that the server uses the updated software then is to reboot so we type yes you do reboot and press enter and the system should reboot and we just wait for the reboot to happen so we close uh, we wait uh, for a certain time and while that's happening I just want to uh, clear to clear up the screen and then we wait we ping that machine and we wait for it to come back and there we see it's back now so now we can log in again we log in with that dspace user as we did before we type the password in which is 09 Ubuntu 09 and there we go we have the server ready to be prepared and is there anything else we need to do let's see we go back and we just review what did we do we went through requirements, we did the before installation, which was the hostname selection, we went through the installation, uh, went through the important parts of the installation, and then after the Ubuntu server installation, we went through the network setup. Uh, so that's it, that completes the first procedure, which is to install Ubuntu. Uh, I will be preparing a video for the next procedure which is preparing the Ubuntu server with all the softwares and configuring the softwares and getting it ready for the DSpace installation. Thank you very much. Bye.